Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and to another list spam. So uh, if you've not seen a list spam before, this is basically um, me making a list out of every formation in an army book, uh, how I would play the game, and then basically go over it, um, why I think it would work, and having a little look at the key units for it. So this one is the Bulge American. I have done it for all the other Bulge books, all the Berlin books, and um, I'll be working my way through the mid-war and alternate into late war. So um, enjoy the ride and um, any questions just let, write in the comments and um, feel free to use any of these lists but if you do let me know how it went and, and if it didn't go that well it was probably your dice at the end of the day. So um, let's go to the first formation which will be a veteran Sherman company. Okay, so the veteran M4 Sherman Late Tank Company is obviously quite expensive on the tanks now, as you'll see in a minute. Um, tried to make a formation decent enough and um, worked out a decent reserve. Um, we've got some good infantry backing them up with recon, got um, good tank destroyers, nice cheap tank destroyers, and we've got plenty of hypervelocity rounds which we'll go over in the command cards. Uh, but yeah, decent enough. Um, the mortars are just there to anchor the formation, but we only really have the one dedicated artillery in the form of the mortars, but we do have two more templates from the recon and the gliders. Okay, so here we have the veteran Sherman, um, late. Um, so basically the arm has gone up by one now, um, still confident trained with a good remount and tactics rating, and they're careful, which is good. Um, so a decent solid tank at range can um, equal a um, 88, um, so yeah, so it goes to 8, uh, plus your 6 will be 14, so you can equal 88 rounds at range. Um, if you have the 76 version, because you can have mix and match of your platoons, um, it would be 80-12, but we can up that to 13 um, with the hypervelocity, which we'll look at now. Okay, so hypervelocity is an upgrade for the 76mm Shermans, um, can be used in all the Shermans, um, veteran and regulars. Um, so, if, so basically, um, one point for two tanks will make them 80 13. That plus one does make a difference. Um, I've seen it go through Tigers quite nicely, um, but if you haven't got the points to do it, then that's it. But I quite like to have 80 13, especially now with the, the Panthers, the front armor 10. Um, so it's good to have. Okay, so now one of my favourite new tanks in the Bulge American book is the Chaffee. Very light, very fast, but with a decent gun. Obviously not 8012, but it's still good for a very light tank. Speaking of 8012, um, we are backing them up with Sherman's in formation, and again the mortars just to anchor the formation, because if the Chaffee's a hit, they'll pretty much die. Um, again, we got the standard um, recon with the gliders and tank destroyers again uh, with a lucky card. Okay, so I said the Chaffee was light, being front four. Same stats as the veteran Germans, um, obviously movement 12, which is nice. Basically, again, 80 10, 3 plus firepower, and it's got plenty of MGs on it as well. Um, so German players, well, whoever you're playing, they're not always going to be German players. Can't really ignore them because if they can get around stuff, they're going to cause a lot of mayhem. And um, they still need to hit them in order to kill them, and being careful can help with that. Okay, next formation is the not veteran uh, M4 Sherman Leets. Um, so obviously you can get a few more tanks in um, with this, although basically it's just still the same 10 Sherman tanks in formation. Um, but this time instead of M18s, we have M36 tank destroyers instead. So those points, that's where they went in the end. And we've also got priests as well. So basically some better artillery. But the problem with fielding the non-veteran ones is we'll look at right now. Okay, so the M4 Sherman Leet. Again, same stats. Um, guns, everything, armor's the same, but they're aggressive. So they hit on threes. They're confident. Um, but they do have a last stand on the 3 plus and your bog standard remount on the 3 plus with your Shermans, but they're only trains. So you won't get that 3 plus tactics with these guys because they don't really know what they're doing, but they're quite happy to stick around. So, you know, as long as you're not losing them too quickly, um, be quite handy to have. Okay, now we have the um, M24 Chaffee Tank Company. So, lots and lots of Chaffees here in this list. It's going to be a swarm of them. It's going to be quite fun, I think. 
backed up with their motors and we have again the recon patrol with the gliders but we have two units of tank destroyers so we have the M18s going along with the nice light tanks here and the M36 tank destroyer being probably the heaviest armoured in this list for packing the, the biggest punch um, since there's no uh, room for uh, hypervelocity rounds in this list but quite good list I think um, could be um, quite annoying for your opponent Okay, so following suit between the veteran and regular stuff is exactly the same. They're aggressive, they're confident, 3 plus last hand, 3 plus remount, but trained. It's the aggressive bit that's going to be the problem, um, but again, they still need to be hit, so bear in mind keeping things at range, keeping them in concealment, should be the key to keeping these guys alive. Okay, so now we're on to the infantry elements of the book. So this is the battle weary armoured rifle company. So the good things with these, you don't have to have them with their half tracks now. So a very good defensive unit, but all my lists are designed to be more offensive. Um, so something new in this one I don't tend to use much is the veteran M8 assault gun platoon. So it's basically a little mini howitzer on a uh, Stuart chassis. So something to keep up with the infantry. Um, Lots of artillery in this list, so we've got um, mortars, that, and priests. Got, we got our recon again, and we've got two units of tank destroyers, which will probably be our reserve element. Um, and we've also got George S. Patton Jr., which we'll have a look at later as well. Okay, so this is the armoured rifle platoon and their company and half tracks. They're both careful. They are, relun they are reluctant, though, um, with a um, four plus. Uh, last stand um so not great um but george s Patton does help with that uh, they're also trained and they have uh, three plus tactics so that will help them dig in if they get on an objective if they remain unpinned long enough to get onto an objective um but they are packing a lot of stuff so they have five bazookas which is good they have lmgs they have a mortar and also the half tracks of 30 cals and 50 cals as well um so being mounted up they can cover a lot of space um, in no um, short time. Okay, so now we go on to the Battle Weary Rifle Company that, um, like the ones before, actually have a four plus last, a uh, four plus um, rally, not last stand. Um, we've got three short platoons um, packed with extra bazooka and an LMG to help them out, um, mortars, more mortars, and some assault gun platoons to soften up Duggan infantry. We also have our, our standard recon. And we have some veteran Shermans and M18s to go into reserve. Again, with George S. Patton Jr., which we'll have a look at. Um, but bear in mind that there are a lot of command cards that can affect the battle weary rifle platoon, making them better, making them worse, tweaking them ever so slightly, making them French. But I think that's where this book comes alive, is in the command cards. Here is the Battle Weary Rifle Platoon. Stats are the same as the armoured ones. The only difference is, is these guys are going to be after run on foot unless you give them soft skin transport, but I don't tend to do that. <clears throat> but they um, can only have up to two uh, bazookas um, and they can have an LMG and a heavy machine gun as well. Um, George S. Patton Jr. for four points is a brilliant card. Really uh, helps with um, the battle weariness. Um, but also is very useful for armoured units as well, as you can see by the card. Um, really, really useful. Just to note, it doesn't work with the 3rd Armoured Division card, um, if, in case you were wondering. It just needs a different commander in a different division. Okay, so now we're on to the very expensive airborne units. So the Bass Stone Parachute Rifle Platoon. Um, so very good units. So we've only got enough points for two platoons, but we do have mortars and we do have howitzers and we do have some recce in the form of their own jeeps, which is nice. And they have 50 cows, which is even nicer bonus. And um, we have our reserve element being the um, Sherman tanks and M18 tank destroyers. Um, random right natural number of 40 because the tank destroyers have hyper velocity AP. You can either have it as the Shermans. Um, having it or the tank destroyers, it's up to you. Uh, but bear in mind, there's a lot of command cards that help out the parachute rifle company. You can tailor it to be making them 82nd Airborne, 101st, or members of Easy Company if you enjoyed the show, Band of Brothers. So 
This is why they're so expensive. Uh, they're careful, fearless with a two plus last stand and they're veteran. Um, of course, they can have bazookas, LMGs and a mortar as well. Um, the only difference between these guys and the D-Day paratroopers is the two plus last stand, um, which is pretty decent. Okay, so this is the last infantry formation in the book, but personally I think it's my favourite um, for cost and stats, um, basically it is the Bastogne Glider Rifle Company. So we've got two platoons, big platoons of 10 teams, and we have mortars and 105mm howitzers as well. Um, again, we have our complement of recon patrols, um, veteran Shermans and M18 tank destroyers. Um, this time they're all equipped with hypervelocity since we've saved a little bit more points um, on the glider troops. Bear in mind you can only have two platoons of infantry, that will affect you, but their stats are pretty good. Um, and being 10 teams with a bazooka, an LMG, and a mortar team, so you've got even more templates in this list, are quite good. Okay, so why I like them, they're careful, D-Day, they're aggressive, so being careful is quite handy. They're confident with a three plus last stand, and they're veteran. So wait a second, this looks like German stats all of a sudden, but slightly cheaper on their upgrades because bazookas are one point, LMGs are one point, heavy machine guns are two points. But they're ten teams rather than the seven which the Germans can field. So this is why I really like these as my favourite of the um, Bulge American infantry formations and why they featured so heavily as a support unit in pretty much every list I put together. Okay, so now we're on to the tank destroyer formations. The M18 tank destroyer, a very light um, tank with a very good gun. Um, so basically following suit with the chaffies. Got plenty of these in formation. Um, we also have our own um, recon element in formation as well with the security section. We have artillery with priests, veteran Shermans just to add a little bit of armor and our well a trusted um, Bastogne glider rifle platoon as well to back them up. And when I said light, I mean light, um, front armour 2, so not great. Uh, they are careful, confident, obviously counter-attack is a 6, but you're not going to be wanting to stick around with an open-top tank. Uh, they're veteran with a 4 plus assault. They do have seek, strike and destroy, which is good, so basically if they pass a blitz move, they can then attempt a shoot and scoot. Um, they're fast, they would be, they're quite light, um, but they do have an 80-12 gun, which is brilliant, which can go to 80-13. Because we have the um, hypervelocity tank rounds, um, which you'll see next, but I won't speak about it because we pretty much know what it does. It's exactly the same as the Sherman one, where it's uh, one point per two tank teams. Okay, so this is the last formation from the book, the M36 Tank Destroyer Company. So basically, a very a much bigger gun than the M10s and the M18s, but obviously comes a bigger cost. So we do have some M10s just to add a little bit more weight to the formation and again we have our recon um, in formation, priests to back up with some artillery and the glider rifle platoon to get in where the tank destroyers really want, don't want to be going and shouldn't really be going either. So here we have the M36, so careful, confident, obviously counter-attack and um, everything else ain't that great. They are veteran though, which will help with the seek, strike and destroy. But the big thing is their gun is 8014, which is nice. The same as the older version of the M10 Achilles. The M10 Achilles, the new one's now 8015, but 8014 is gonna do the job against most heavy armor you're up against. So in the command cards, we have a few other formations. So we have the damned engineers. So basically these are, um, same stats, but well, they, they use the stats as the glider infantry, um, but basically it helps you build a really defensive formation because you got booby traps and roadblocks, so really a lot to kind of um, slow down your opponent um, before they get to grips with you. Um, not use them yet, maybe I might try them if I do a defensive list one day, um, but um, keep your eyes peeled in case that video does pop up. Okay, and here we have the other four uh, build card formations. Um, so three are basically scouty ones, one being M24s, um, one being um, Stuarts, and the other one being just a formation made out of your M8 scout cars. And we also have an engineer combat platoon, which is different to the damned engineers, 
Um, so basically, the American Bucks always to have an engineer combat platoon, but the ones so far have all been aggressive. These ones are careful, and obviously being pioneers can get over minefields and such better. So quite good. Okay, so now we'll look at a few units that I haven't used but are new to this book, which I think you should have a look at. So we have the M26 Pershing. So this basically is a super heavy tank. So careful, confident, trained with a tactics rating of three plus because it's a veteran tank. Um, but front armor nine with AT14. So it's a bit of a beast, but it comes at a, quite a high price tag. <clears throat> Not so much as the T26 Super Persian. Though you can only ever have one, but it is front armor 13 um, with a bigger gun again. Um, would like to use it one day, but just having a unit on its own, I just feel like something bad's gonna go uh, and happen to it. We then have the new Sherman chassis that we can use. We have the M4 Easy 8, um, so it's basically a um, Sherman 76, slightly faster with better cross rating. And if you don't move more than four inches, you don't count as moving, so your um, stabilizers um, don't kick in. Um, so basically, move four inches forward, you still get your full rate of fire, but the stabilizers don't uh, hamper you, which is nice. Uh, and then we have the M4 Jumbo, which is your super heavy tank, which you can have, have in your unit, which you can just palm off um, any smaller AT. So pack 40s at long range are not going to hurt it. You can bounce 88 rounds, um, but the big, big AT-17 rounds, it can stop at long range. Um, yeah, it can stop at long range, um, but maybe you might want to keep your jumbos intact for those ones. Okay, then finally, the M4 Sherman Calliope. Um, I only used it in my starter set battles because it's not um, something I would tend to use. I tend not to use salvo weapons too much. Um, but yeah, this is the last card we'll look at. Just basically gives you a salvo weapon for the Americans. There is another salvo weapon the Americans do have in this book, but I won't look at it too much. But I feel the Sherman Calliope is better. Um, <clears throat> and that's it. Thanks for listening to me um, droning on about this book. There's a lot more in this book I haven't covered, especially in the command cards. If you do have them yourself or interested, I would get it. It is a very good book if you're into your um, uh, Americans. Um, does add a lot that the D-Day book didn't have, um, especially with the hypervelocity rounds. Um, but overall, I think it just finishes off the Americans, and it's got so much flavour in the command cards. Um, and there's also basically this is the book if you want to play as the French um, in the late war. Um, and that's it. I hope you enjoyed. I hope this has encouraged you to play um, the book a bit more, or maybe even to buy it. Um, but let me know if it's helped you out on your way your American journey into Flames of War and if any of these lists uh, do good for you.